Hey traders, David Frost, My Strategic Forecast. You're here for another episode of Common Sense Market Analysis. Today is Thursday, October 10, 2020, which is the proxy for the S&P 500. What do we have on the docket today? Well, by the end of the day, the market didn't do too much. She did not, underline not, make a new high. She made an attempt, not a new high, and couldn't really get down very far. There are three lines on the screen. We know the red one. She wasn't anywhere near that today. We don't have to talk about it. 565.17. And we know the top one, 582.10, that's a formula-driven number. If she were to rally again, that is the next number at least I have on my docket or my board. The middle number is 574.71. We're very familiar with that number. That was the most recent breakout area. We talked about it yesterday in the live room. We talked about it last night in the video. And what I want to know is when you look at an intraday chart, and of course right of the vertical is today's activity, do you think that we, meaning inside the number members, live room members, in real time, traded from 574.71 on the long side? Do you think we used it as support? And the answer is, of course we did. That's like asking a bear if he shits in the woods or asking a frog if his ass is watertight. Of course we traded 574.71. That was the most recent breakout area. I harp on those things all the time. It's one of my big things that I teach. We'll get to inside the numbers in a few moments. Do we really need to have any further discussion on the daily chart? More than we've had yesterday, the day before. She's in an uptrend. The trend is your friend. She's now broken out above the previous high. That's what she came back to test today. So we also know this. Below 574.71, she's not as bullish as if she's above. Doesn't mean the market turns bearish, but she's most bullish, underline most above 574.71. She stayed above there today, period, full stop. Just as a reminder, the weekly chart is in an on-time type of situation. And we do have something else that I'm going to call important. I think anniversaries are important. Now, they don't always produce a move in one direction or another, but important anniversaries or anniversaries of important things are important. Case in point, this one was brought up in the live room today. I think it was Mark B that brought it up. If I have that wrong, my apologies. But let's go to the daily chart and let's reel back the clock all the way back until we get to an important day. And the important day is Thursday, October 7. Tomorrow is the anniversary of October 11, 2007, 17 years removed. 17, by the way, is a prime number. So what do we do with that information? Nothing directly. It's knowledge. It's information. We want to know about important anniversaries. 17 years removed from an all-time high. That was one of the worst bear markets that a lot of today's traders, if they were around back then, have ever seen. There's only been a handful in our generation, if you will, like that. We had the crash of 87, we had the dot-com bust in 19 or March of 2000 for about 18 months, the run-up through 1999. We had the financial crisis 2008 into 2009. The bottom was March of 2009. It's topped or the market topped, as you just saw, October 11 in that crisis, 2007. Will tomorrow mark an important day, time will tell. Write it down, put it on a sticky note. Now I wanna bring something else to your attention. We're moving over to inside the numbers and the notes, but there's something in particular that I wanna point out because this number was on the board for a while. We've got 576.65 as our bull pivot. That was today, today's bull pivot. It was also 
resistance yesterday. It was a target yesterday. It's been a target on the board for a while. If and when they were going to make new highs, that was the next target inside the number members. Live room members know this. I've shown that number a while. Above opens the door to yesterday's high and so on. And then, of course, if there were going to have a down leg, we have the most recent breakout area, 574.71. We know about that. Okay, fair enough. Let's focus on 576.65. That was our bull pivot today. There's a method to the madness. Stay with me. Again, with the five-minute chart, right of the vertical is today's activity. Your green horizontal line is the bull pivot at 576.65. And you guessed it, that was not only our exit from a long trade, but it was a proposed short opportunity. We had this morning what's called double barrel trade situation. We had a long, we exited, flipped it around, had a short. Traders took the long, some traders took both. Some traders took the long and short. Some traders take the long only, the short only. We have a variety of of different types of traders in the live trading room. It was posted inside the numbers, live room. It was a trade both ways, double barrel across the board. Remember, pause the video, read the notes, go back to the chart and double check the work. First, on the phony CPI data release that occurred at 8.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, the initial drop in the spider was to 574.83 just above by 12 cents, the breakout area. They know about that place, obviously. Then what happened? Just minutes later, they did the deal. We can go back to look at the chart. Here's what happens after the 8.30 a.m. data release. Here's 8.30, they come up short. Here's by 8.40, they spiked it, the 574.71. They open the day above it. They come back and do it in real time. We take the trade, the rest is history. We call these the thieves in the pre-market already did the deal and ran a test. They can bounce off it as normally for the first time, best time situation. We had the numbers if they, so we weren't real worried about it in real time. And then what do you have? And this is all before the opening bell. 576.65 is the bull pivot and overhead resistance on a first time, best time basis. And there's your morning schematic. We had the buy, we had the sell, we had the whole ball of wax. Kitten caboodle. Pause the video, read the notes, go back to the chart and double check the work. What I showed you that was presented in the pre-market is now here being presented in real time. As an example, 952, there's your minimum required base hit. From the most recent breakout area, funny how that works. Of course, we were taking that trade. Pause the video, read the notes, go back to the chart, and double check the work. What about stocks on the move? We had three potentials on the board today, and I'll have you note, by the way, earnings season kind of gets underway officially tomorrow. We'll have some of the big banks reporting. Then we'll have more into early next week. And then in about four or five trading days, they really start to come fast and furious. And they'll do that for four to six weeks. It'll be what we call an earnings. For now, we're going to take a look at PayPal and TD, which is Toronto Dominion. And then Dal, D-A-L, Delta Airlines. They didn't hit their number. So they're off the board. They were a no trade. Here's the chart of PayPal, 79.36, 78.34 was the second number. They never got to the second number. They meandered around the first number. We call this one a dud. They gave you a little bit of a trade off the first number, but it was more of a dud type situation. No harm, no foul. The numbers work irregardless. About TD, about 58.95 plus shipping and handling. They hit it, they spiked it, they rallied back, they gave you the trade, went up over 60 bucks. From a scalp slash day trading perspective, that's just fine. We'll take that all day long, every day. What's going on over in Camp IWM? 
Well, it's interesting. They were down on the day with relative weakness against the SPY. So the SPY at the end of the day was down a buck, less than two tenths of 1%. It's really nothing. They didn't really move much. The IWM was down $1.21 or a little more than half of 1%. But you'll notice they finished very strong on the day, meaning they finished near the highs. When you go to a five minute chart, you can see what happened. They rallied it into the close. So we're gonna note that it's a potential puzzle piece for tomorrow. It may turn out to be absolutely nothing whatsoever, but at the end of the day, it's generally how they close them that's most important rather than how they trade them out during the day. Earlier on, they ran a test of the previous low over here from last Thursday. The 50 period moving average also, and then ricochet off that stuff to rally him back, close them strong into the end of the day. Still have an open gap above from yesterday. Now, what about the folks down at the transportation department? Not much happened. Started down earlier, rally back, finished down on the day, 52 bucks, about a third of 1%. But we're not going to make a federal case out of that. 50 bucks on a 15 or $16,000 index isn't really all that much. Neither is one third of 1%. We're going to just call it slightly down day, but there's no material change in the chart. We can simply move it along. Hey, I want to take a quick survey. We're just going to take a detour for a second. I want you to post it under the video in the comments section if you're interested. Thinking about adding back to inside the numbers and the live room or potentially just the live room. I'm not 100% sure yet. Some additional numbers in the morning such as the Qs, the IWM, maybe some sectors. Do we want to see gold, crude oil? Do we want to see the SMH? Is there value for members in putting those numbers up on the board each and every day? It's more work, but if there's value, I'm willing to do it. But I got to know what you think inside the numbers live for sure if I'm going to do it. And if I add it to inside the numbers... I want to know what you think. Post a comment under the video. Let's move on. We'll go over to the Qs. What about the Q people? They have this high over here. They haven't been able to eclipse. They made an attempt today, spiked yesterday's high, but didn't close above it. They have an open gap up here at 496.34. Other than that, which we talked about last night, there's no material change. So once again, we can simply move it along. XLF, above all the moving averages, trend is your friend, down 14 cents, 0.31%, third of a percent. Again, we're not going to make a federal case out of that. It's just down a little bit, but it's not a material change on the chart. So once again, when there's no material change, we're going to do what? Repeat after me. That's right. We're going to move it along. Same deal with Smash Mouth. No change from yesterday. No deal on the chart. They didn't get above the high. No material change. We know where the next place is. 259.15. We'll see if they want to float them up into the weekend or if tomorrow is going to be something different in store with the anniversary. Are they going to trade them right up into the weekend on the anniversary date? We'll see. If I told you how much I appreciate each and every one of you, without you, these videos are not possible. That is true and accurate information. We're pulling the ripcord here today. I'm David Frost, my strategic forecast. Thanks again for tuning in to another episode of Common Sense Market Analysis.